recharge which this is witchcraft wednesday my name is octavia and today the topic i wanted to discuss is being a witch and being in the broom closet i personally don't have um experience being in the broom closet because when i became when i started practicing witchcraft and becoming a witch and all this stuff and getting into everything I was married to a wonderful human who supports pretty much anything I do. So, and he also is interested in the spiritual, spiritual, like spirituality and witchcraft. Like he's interested in it. He doesn't really practice anything, but he is very interested in it. So, and he does tarot too. So, I've never had to hide any part of me when it comes to that. Plus, I don't talk to my uh, my um, family. I don't have any relationship with them. Those would, be, those would really be the only people that I would have to hide my beliefs around if I still had any relationship with them, but I do not, so I don't have to. So keep that in mind when I'm give, going over these tips and things that I personally don't have experience with this. I just, this is just things that I've thought and I've heard other people suggest that I think would be helpful. And well, let's get into it. So, I think the first thing is like an altar. Um, a lot of people wonder, oh, well, I can't really have an altar in my house uh, or my room. I live with my parents or I live with someone who's very against uh, what I wanna do or I don't feel comfortable doing it around other people or having like a space for it. My recommendation is to either have like a travel altar, like, you know, um, put everything in like a little box that has like maybe like a little lock, a lock on it or something. Uh, make sure the box is kind of not suspicious looking, like it's not, you know, doesn't have pentagrams all over it and, you know, witch symbols and all that stuff. Like it doesn't have anything on it, so it's just kind of like a plain box and you just got all your little stuff in there and maybe have a lock and then if you look close to a woods, a forest, anything like that, or if you have one, you could always go out in those areas and just lay out all of your little your little altar and do your rituals and your spell work out there. Or um, you could like you know have your little travel altar, wait until everyone leaves the house, and then do your practices. And now, if you want an altar that's actually set up uh, day and night, every day of the year, stuff like that, but you don't want you but you want it to be inconspicuous look into getting stuff that has like multiple purposes for like an altar cloth you could just have just like a regular like table runner or small little like doilies or tablecloth things like that and just put it maybe over a window seal um over top of a dresser and maybe mix like have just regular life stuff like a um a jewelry box stuff like that and then have maybe a couple candles, just like peeler candles you can have. Uh, maybe just little like peeler candles or little tea candles, you could have those out. Because a lot of people have candles out in their room and they don't really mean anything, but you can have ones that you know, like you know what they mean. So you can have those on your little altar. Oh, I'm trying to think of what else. Crystals, you can have crystals out. Crystals, rocks, things like that. Um, I think that is, those are becoming so mainstream now and so many different people have them. Some people just collect them because they think they're pretty. So having a few like spread around your house or on your altar, I really don't think is gonna make people think twice when they look at that. If they ever come across it or they come into your house and see that stuff, they're not gonna be like, oh, that person's a witch. They have some rocks. Try to think of what else for your altar. An incense burner. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people use incense. That's not something that's specific just to witchcraft or spirituality. Some people just like the smell of incense. So you can have a little incense burner. Probably not the incense burner I have, which is a uh, a little cauldron. Maybe not that one. That might be a little suspicious. <laughs> but just any kind of regular incense burner that doesn't really give anything away. You can have that out. Um, trying to think what else. If you have a cauldron, uh, I would recommend not leaving it on your altar because, I mean, that's kind of like a big red flag that you're into witchcraft is cauldrons because that's what pretty much is 
bigly associated with witchcraft. But if you want a little cauldron, which I think is great to have, maybe find somewhere that you could put it away. Like, if, I mean, if you're not worried about someone going through your dresser drawers, you could always put it in one of your drawers. Like, I know at the bottom of my dresser, I don't need to have it there, but I just, I, I run out of room in my, in my witch room. Uh, I run out of room, so I have some, like, extra candles and things just shoved into the bottom dress drawer of my dresser. So you can do stuff like that, too, with, like, keeping, you can keep, like, extra candles in there, you could keep your wand in there, um, your little candle holders, extra crystals, a cauldron, stuff like that. You could put that in a dresser drawer, all neat and tidy, if you want. So, I think that's all I can think of for altars, like how to keep it more, like I think the main goal is if you're going to have an altar out 24-7 and you're trying to be in the broom closet is to make your altar look very inconspicuous, like make it look like it's just maybe decoration or just pretty rocks, stuff like that. Stuff that someone's not going to look at and be scream, witch, burn them. Yeah, make sure it's not something like that. Uh, also, I mean, if we really want to get technical, you don't need anything to be a witch. You don't need herbs, you don't need crystals, you don't need a cauldron, you don't need candles, you don't need anything, technically. We just like to use them because, I mean, first off, it's a good way to center your energy on something. And it's a good, having all these items is a good way to center your energy. Some of them do have, uh, like magical qualities, like inner, like different kind of energy vibes and stuff like that. But really, your magic comes from within you. Your energy uh, comes from within you. So when you're doing a spell, you really don't need those items. It's just a good way to center yourself. So if you feel like, oh, I can't have any of this stuff in my house or anywhere around me because it's just, it's not possible, then consider just you. You're, I mean, just you. I like just. Be a witch, just be yourself, like, do your spells, do your incantations, do your chanting, affirmations, stuff like that, without using anything. Like you can use your finger as a wand, like pointing, drawing everything. You can, I mean, just use your hands to, like for energy, for, um, char you can use your chance to charge your bath water. Just think of like the energy leaving your hands and filling your bathtub up with whatever kind of energy vibes you're trying to give out. So yeah, so like, I mean, you really don't need anything. I know, I know, um, it kind of sucks if you really like all the items and you're like, oh, I really want to have them. But if you can't, if you like, you know, you can't, then just consider that you yourself like, no witch really needs any of this stuff to do their workings. It all comes from within. Try to think of other tips. Okay, so tips for your book, if you have book for books, uh, cards, stuff like that. For books, my highest recommendation, which uh, kind of can suck if you're someone who, like me, loves a good, like, physical book, is to like if you if you buy your own stuff like if you're in charge of your own card your own credit I mean your own bank card or credit card uh, you don't have to worry about someone going in there and seeing what you're buying I would consider getting a Kindle or any kind of like book like electronic book reader I would consider getting all your books in either audio or like Kindle form like PDF form that's what I would consider so that way you don't have any like physical books lying around that you have to hide or keep hidden and again that would really only work if you have access to your own money and things and you don't have to worry about someone looking at your bank statements and stuff like that and people would be like oh well that what, 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 what's that why are you getting that or I mean like if you order stuff from Amazon pretty sure yeah ordering books audio, um, audio and just regular PDF books from Amazon when you order it, it doesn't tell, it, it won't say the name of the books and stuff that you got on your bank statement. I, I, at least mine doesn't. Though, if someone has access to your Amazon, they're going to see what it is. But anyway, so that's a good way for books. I mean, if you do want, if you want to feel a physical book, I would also suggest maybe 
heading out to a library on your free days and reading, just grabbing a couple books and reading as much as you can there if you don't feel comfortable checking it out and bringing it home. So just sitting in a library and reading. Uh, also going to a bookstore, grabbing a couple books, going over to where their little coffee machine, like their coffee stands are, because most bookstores have coffee stands in there, and grabbing a couple books, ordering a drink, maybe a little snack, and sitting there and reading through what you can. I know uh, it might not be the most... Uh, right way to do it because you're reading the book and not buying it but hey gotta do what you have to do to get the information also youtube videos are great watching youtube videos uh listening to podcasts instagram even some tiktok videos stuff like that is also a way to get some information um though i would take that information with like a grain of salt because as much as witches may want and really believe in giving just the facts and information. Our opinions do bleed into our practice. That's just human nature. So I really think that going to the sources with source material is the best way to do it and do not read just one book on one subject. Okay, rambling, I'm off my soapbox. Cards. If you're someone who wants to get into tarot, this is gonna be a little more difficult. Unless, like I said, you can just get a, your tarot deck and put it in a box and lock it and believe that no one's gonna touch it. That's great. Or putting it in your dresser drawer. That's another way. So, I mean, that's really the recommendation. Like, if you have a way to hide your tarot deck or tarot decks or oracle decks, then consider doing it. Think of how to do it. Um, you know, putting it in a box, putting it in your dresser drawer, whatever. Stuff like that. Trying to think, is there anything else I want to touch on let's see I touched on your altar your information like books uh, tarot decks sorry like I normally don't have nails and I put these nails on so then it's fun to just go like that <laughs> um, hmm, herbs okay so herbs if you are someone who likes to use herbs in your practice that's kind of an easy thing to hide because a lot of the herbs, I mean, as long as you're getting herbs that are edible, you know, not none of the poisonous ones or didn't more, you know, ones that people aren't eating. But if you're, if you're just going to use like, just use regular like cooking herbs, you can use those for your practice. And then, I mean, they're just in your kitchen. So when people see them, they're just going to think, oh, this person uses all the bunch of herbs for cooking. And you can also do a lot of your magic in the kitchen. Like there's kitchen witchcraft, kitchen witchery. You can do a lot of your magic in the kitchen, which is, I think, pretty like incognito, kind of on the down low. Oh, if that sounds weird to say, and that didn't sound right coming out of my mouth. <laughs> but, you know, witch, uh, kitchen witchery, I think, is something that's pretty easy to do around other people without people even knowing what you're doing. So, yeah, uh, I think that's my tips uh, I hope that you don't always have to be in the broom closet because I'm sure I, I can just imagine how much that pretty much sucks is to have to hide a part of yourself because you're in danger or you're you're in danger if you're in danger physically emotionally mentally things like that because you just can't be who you are so I really hope that eventually you can become get into a place that's safe for you where you can be your witchy self and not have to worry about any kind of repercussions for it. Because unfortunately we still live in a time where witchcraft, witchcraft, um, paganism, the left hand path, like, uh, it's all frowned upon. And a lot of people still like vilify it and think it's evil. Our media does not help the situation. Uh, a lot of Christianity, unfortunately, doesn't help either. So yeah, I hope eventually that changes. I do think that witchcraft is becoming more mainstream, which love it or hate it, I think can be a good thing because it's making it more accessible to people and it's bringing more light onto it so people aren't as scared of it. I have differing opinions on the whole situation because I also think that we have too much emphasis on the love and light and not enough on the darkness 
and that's still being very highly vilified and like evil and oh no bad or bad but at least we're getting there I think I think we are slowly getting there thankfully and as the new generation new generations come about I think the stigma behind witchcraft will slowly disappear and everyone will be able to be out of the broom closet all right that's all I have for you this week so I'll see you next week on Witchcraft Wednesday.